Many people dream of journeys to foreign planets, although you would prefer to avoid some worlds because the environmental conditions can sometimes be hairy. There has been no doubt for a long time that humanity's space travel is predetermined, as our curiosity, especially about extraterrestrial life, cannot be contained. Apart from the problems surrounding the urgently needed quarantine of returnees, which will arise because quite different microorganisms are to be expected on alien worlds, astronauts are exposed to unruly physical forces and chemical cocktails hostile to life everywhere outside the Earth. Nevertheless, in order to begin our dangerous journey, we first turn to our neighboring planets and then make the long jump to exoplanets in foreign solar systems. If you like our videos, please support us with a thumbs up. Subscribe to Simply Space and look forward to the videos that will be waiting for you in the future. Let's begin our journey through the vastness of the universe. Mercury Of the eight planets in our solar system, the spherical Mercury is the closest to our central star. On average, its distance to the Sun is less than 40% of the distance between the Sun and Earth, which is clearly reflected in the temperatures on its surface. With about negative 170 degrees Celsius on its night side and plus 430 degrees Celsius at noon, the demands on the astronauts' spacesuits are quite high. This high fluctuation in temperature is due to the fact that the smallest planet in our solar system, with a diameter of less than 4,900 kilometers, had no chance of capturing a significant atmosphere. By the way, Mercury is named after the messenger of the gods, Mercurius. This is the Roman god of traitors and thieves. Venus The second planet of our solar system also pushes us away with its heat. This is not only due to its proximity to the Sun, which is about 72% of the distance between the Earth and the Sun. The main reason for this is the extremely dense atmosphere of Venus, which consists mainly of carbon dioxide, 96.5%, and ensures a pressure of 92 bar on the surface. This means that the air pressure there corresponds to the pressure that a diver on Earth would be exposed to at a water depth of almost 1,000 meters. In a constant heat of more than 460 degrees Celsius, which does not find any real cooling on the night side either, our astronauts find every step extremely difficult, especially since bathing is only conceivable in the uninviting lakes of molten lead. It was probably the pretty hand mirror of the Roman goddess of love, Venus, that helped the planet to its astronomical symbol. Mars Finally arriving on the much cooler Mars, our astronauts are directly enveloped by a wild dust storm that lasts for hours and keeps the entire planet in a firm grip for days. Since the wind speeds here can exceed 300 kilometers per hour, the lander must immediately be very firmly fixed in the rust-red rock field. The fact that Mars is a good 1.5 times as far away from the Sun as Earth is noticeable in the temperatures which fluctuate between about negative 150 and plus 20 degrees Celsius. This wide variation is due to the very thin atmosphere, which consists of over 95% carbon dioxide. At the surface of Mars, the air pressure is only 0.006 bar. To get a feeling for this, astronauts on Earth would have to get off far out in the stratosphere. A certain ray of hope is perhaps offered by the Hellas Basin, which according to current knowledge, is the deepest impact crater in our solar system. At the deep bottom of this crater, the temperature can sometimes be 10 degrees higher than in the wider surroundings. However, it is precisely the enormous temperature differences that lead to the formation of the strong winds, picking up the dust from the bottom of the crater and starting there to really set global sandstorms in motion. Jupiter Whoever wants to land here has no idea what it will look like down there on the solid surface. It's very likely that the spaceship will be cooked and then crushed in the global, extremely deep hydrogen ocean long before it is even cooked. But before this happens, 
the spacecraft will be caught in centrifuges of wild storm vortices, the sizes of which correspond to about two Earth diameters. Speeds of around 750 kilometers per hour are quite acceptable. So that the space travelers there do not get bored, Jupiter has thunderstorms to offer, whose lightning is more than 100 times more energetic than on Earth. It's hard to imagine how loud the thunderclaps are. After all, it is well known that Jupiter was the highest Roman deity who threw lightning around when in a bad mood. The deeper we dive into the ever darker atmosphere, the warmer the surroundings become and the higher the pressure rises. So high, finally, that the hydrogen changes its state of aggregation to a kind of liquid, but which may also be called plasma or metallic hydrogen, since there the electrons and protons are no longer coupled together. No one has ever seen such a sauce before. It conducts electricity and heat like metal and looks like a mirror that reflects every flash in the atmosphere a hundred times brighter, a real challenge for every adventurous astronaut. Saturn After surviving the journey through the atmosphere of Jupiter, Saturn would seem to be a cinch. With an equatorial diameter of just over 120,000 kilometers, which corresponds to almost 10 Earth diameters, the planet with a large ring system is significantly smaller than Jupiter. Since Saturn weighs not even 100 Earth masses, it has an unusually low average density of less than 700 kilograms per cubic meter. So when we dive into its hydrogen atmosphere, we must expect not to encounter a solid surface anywhere. Since Saturn is 10 times as far away from the Sun as the Earth, the mean temperatures are about negative 140 degrees Celsius, but on top of the dense cloud layers, which are also characterized by strong storms. The deeper the spacecraft dips, the warmer and denser Saturn's atmosphere becomes, but probably does not reach the metallic state as on Jupiter. Saturn, by the way, was the Roman god of wealth and harvest. Uranus. We are reaching further out with our spaceship and flying far out, almost twice as far away from the Sun as Saturn is. In the orbit of the pale blue, shimmering Uranus, the Sun appears to us only as a distant, thick, particularly bright star. The temperature on Uranus is therefore also only at a listless negative 200 degrees Celsius and makes us shiver for a long time. In addition to the usual hydrogen, about 85%, found out here, an atmosphere contains a remarkably high proportion of helium, about 15%, which is possibly responsible for its somewhat higher average density of 1300 kilograms per cubic meter. Rather interesting is the narrow, barely discernible ring system of Uranus, yet we are quickly moving on to the last gas giant in our planetary system. Neptune. This planet captivates by permanent, intensive jet streams, which terrorize it as it were always. In the process, frozen clouds are pressed into the great dark spot, but at far more than 2,000 kilometers per hour, for example, at well over twice the speed of sound, which shakes our spaceship quite a bit, which is only something for the very hard-boiled. Nevertheless, it is and remains a mystery how such turbulent wind systems can occur on Neptune at all since the eighth planet hardly gets any energy from the Sun, which is 30 times as far away here as from Earth. Pluto Finally, we have solid ground under our feet again, because little Pluto, with its 2,375 kilometers in diameter, is much smaller than our moon and consists, as far as the eye can see, of frozen nitrogen and carbon monoxide. In 2006, the International Astronomical Union or IAU, removed it from the list of our planets and assigned it to the dwarf or minor planets. Methane, which has also solidified to ice, provides a surface that is sometimes quite bright in pink-brown tones. However, the planet develops its colors less through the dark sunlight than through gamma rays received from the depths of space. Out here, the sun still reaches a brightness that the full night moon gives to the Earth and heats up the planet's surface to about negative 230 degrees Celsius, only a good 40 degrees above absolute zero in space. Carbon Planet Now we take a long jump towards the center of our galaxy 
to an exoplanet of a completely different solar system. While we have much more oxygen than carbon on Earth, the situation is quite different in the central part of the Milky Way, which has a major impact on the planet formation there. The morning mood on such a carbon planet is anything but crystal clear and blue. Instead, we encounter a yellowish haze and black soot clouds. Nevertheless, we penetrate deeper into this atmosphere and are happy to discover a lake landscape. But on closer inspection, the basins are filled with disgusting crude oil and tar. Everywhere, the surface bubbles and releases stinking methane into the environment, which partly settles again in depressions as black mud. Also, the weather forecast does not let us expect anything good, because soon, it will be raining gasoline and asphalt. If you want to put out your cigarette as soon as possible, you are welcome to finish your smoke in peace, as the oxygen content is so low that nothing burns here. But there is one good thing about this terrible planet. Where there is a lot of carbon, you can find lots of diamonds. Caro XO3b The densest and most massive planet so far is called Caro XO3b. It's about the size of Jupiter, which means that you would have to string 11 Earths together, like a string of pearls, to get to its diameter. But Caro XO3b is about 20 times heavier than Jupiter, which makes it about twice as dense as lead. To walk on its surface is absolutely impossible, because we would have to carry our 50-fold weight there. A strong man who weighs 90 kilograms on Earth weighs 4.5 tons on this strange planet. Even when you're lying down, you feel as if an elephant is constantly sitting on your chest, and you can hear all your bones breaking. Now, people are known for not letting even the most adverse circumstances stop them from satisfying their curiosity and their thirst for knowledge, and for this, they embark on any journey, no matter how arduous. If you yourself have an idea of a very exciting place in the universe, please let us know where we should fly to next time. Write your comment below.